Hello and welcome to another Ginge Mathematician video. Lots of requests for this. So this is about IGCSC 050 maths and about domain and range. This is one of the new topics that we are now considering on the 2025. And there's not really that much information if we actually look at the 2025 syllabus. All they've said here is understand functions, which we'll do some uh, brief uh, work on, domain and range, and using function notation. So that's all the information that we have to go on. So let me start with functions first of all, where domain and range fit into that, and those typical exam questions. So imagine we've got five children's toys here. So I've got five children's toys, I've got a phone, I've got a beach ball and so on. And what we can do is we've got the numbers one, two, three, four, and five in these curly brackets. What we can do is think of this as essentially a set of numbers, a set of things. And essentially what a function is, is we take these set of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and then we match it up to one or two of the different toys that we have. So for example, one gets mapped, this is the word we're going to use in the moment, to the toy phone. Three, for example, gets mapped over to the beach ball. And notice there's a one-on-one -on -one relation. So that means that for every one number here, we have one thing over here. And that's essentially what a function is. Now you can have a function, for example, as I've just indicated, notice we've got three and four here. They both map to the beach ball. So sometimes imagine you have um, a machine, for example, um, a vending machine, and you've got Cokes, for example, you can press two different buttons on that machine and it will still give you that Coke. You press on 21 and 23 and that gives you the Coke. So you can have functions where uh, two things, so three and four, map onto one thing over here, or the more sort of classical function, which is they have one thing over here and it maps to one thing over there. Now you've actually seen functions in lots of different ways. So for examples, a mapping diagram is probably the most common way of actually seeing this. So you can see the mapping here from one to three, two to five, three to seven. And there's some rule in that function machine to actually go from A to B, linking into domain and range a bit later. You've also seen what's called a table of values or a mapping table. So notice when you're actually trying to draw a graph, instead of putting these numbers like this in the diagram, we often put it into a table to give us a table of values. Now with that table of values, you can actually plot those points. You have one, three, two, five, three, seven, and so on, and gives you this straight line graph. Again, some of you out there probably already know what this function is, but we will talk about that in a moment. We can also think of this as ordered pairs. Now notice these ordered pairs, one, three, two, five, are just coordinates. Again, in probability, sometimes we use this notation. What you're probably the most familiar with is an equation. So notice this relationship here, we multiply by two and then we add on one. That's essentially going from A to B. And we can think of this as y equals two x plus one. We take the x coordinate, we double it, and then we add one. Again, all those different things you see in front of you, all those five different things represent the same relationship. All we're adding in here is so-called function notation, which is very similar to the equation notation. The only thing to be aware of is instead of writing y, we write f of x instead. Sometimes you'll see this slightly older notation with f colon x and with an arrow. So that's all a function is. Essentially, all we do is we just go from one thing, I'm going to talk about domain and range in a moment, we go from one thing on the left hand side to one thing on the right hand side, or we're also allowed to take two things on the left hand side and go one on the right hand side. Now, where does domain and range fit into this? So all the domain is, is what x can be. So what the values on the left hand side can be for the mapping. And the range is what y can be. So what can the numbers be on the right hand side? So if we take a nice straightforward example, so what we've looked at before, our function going from one to three, two to five, three to seven, four to nine, five to 11. Now remember to write this as a function, this was equal to two x plus one. The domain of this function is simply the numbers on the left hand side, one, two, three, four, and five. The range is just the numbers on the right hand side. Notice we do not have the number four. We don't have the number four because there's no number in our domain, one, two, three, or four, five, that if we apply this rule, it gives us a number on the right-hand side. 
So the easiest way to visualize domain and range is using a mapping diagram to see actually, okay, on the left-hand side is our domain, the right-hand side is our range. Now, sometimes you could be given a function. So here's a function here, a quadratic in completing the square form. And if we remember what we've done on completing the square form, this point here is equal to 2, 5. Remember, in this form, we can just flip the sign here and then just read off this for the y value. Now, the domain of this function, so from a graphing standpoint, is if I draw a vertical line anywhere, so here, or here, or here, do I touch the graph? Well, I touch the graph here once, I touch the graph here once, I touch the graph here once. Notice it goes to infinity in both directions. So anywhere I draw a vertical line, I'm going to hit the graph. So the domain of this function, what can x be? Well, it can be anything, basically. But we write it in a very strange way. We write the domain of g is this r symbol. And that just stands for all real numbers. That's maths notation. That's maths words for it can be anything, essentially. Now, if we do the same analysis for the range, so remember, the range is what y can be. If we draw horizontal lines, I'm going to draw this in black, do I hit the graph? So let me draw some horizontal lines anywhere I like. Now, notice these bottom ones, I do not hit the graph. This one here, I do hit the graph twice. That's perfectly fine. Um, if I draw a line just here, just there, notice I just touch it once here. Okay, and anything above this line, I'm going to touch, uh, touch, sorry, twice, yeah, because it goes off to infinity going upwards. So the range of our function is, well, our y coordinate is equal to 5 here. It's everything above 5 and including 5 as well. So the range, so we write our function of g of x is greater than or equal to 5. So there are two ways you need to understand domain and range. One from a mapping diagram, so from numbers. And also on the other side, which would be a more advanced skill, is taking one of the functions you've already seen, so a line or a quadratic or possibly a cubic, and then working at the domain and range from that. Don't worry, this is the theory. I'll be going through plenty of exam style questions. Okay, so let's get on to the exam questions because, okay, that's the theory of domain and range, but sometimes it's not very helpful. You actually need to see some questions and how they could test you. So this is question four. This comes actually from the specimen paper. F of X equals three X minus five. The domain of F of X is minus three zero two, and we want to work at the range. So imagine I do this in a mapping diagram. So we have minus three zero two. That's our domain. Our function is 3x minus 5, and we want to find this circle out over here, which is the range, going from this number to this number to this number. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, first of all, we take the minus 3 and put it into our function. So we're going to replace the x with minus 3. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a minus 3. So copying it across, again, I'm just taking it from the function we have. And if I work that out, 3 times minus 3 is minus 9, minus 5 is equal to minus 14. So if I apply this function to minus 3 from the domain, the answer in the range is minus 14. If I do the same with 0, so f of 0, so wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a 0, and that gives me minus 5. So we can put in minus 5, and then we do the same with 2, you can see the pattern here. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to put a 2, and that gives us 6 minus 5 is equal to 1. So all these numbers on the right-hand side are a range, and all we do is write them in minus 14, minus 5, 1, and that gives us the two marks for this specimen paper question. Again, you can see the answer down below, and you get one mark for just getting two correct. Now, I've used some Corbett Maths questions here to really help you understand exactly about domain and range here. So if you want to check out all the questions, then do click on the link in the description. Thank you, Corbett Maths, for these questions. So we have a function here, x squared minus 2. Find the value of f of minus 4. Wherever I see an x, I put a minus 4. So again, just basic question to practice quickly. Remember, minus 4 all squared is equal to 16. 
this is not 16, this is 2. Uh, minus 2, don't please write in the comments. There's always someone that writes in the comments and doesn't watch the next part of the video. Uh, and that gives us then 14, perfect. And now we have the question we're focusing on in this video, which is what is the range of f of x? Now, if I sketch this function, now we can do a table of values, but we can also use our knowledge of quadratics. The x squared function, this is a parabola, good word to know, and just touches at 0, 0. However, we've got a negative 2, and the transformation that has is that we're going to bring our graph down by two units. So x squared minus 2 looks like this. Let's try and draw a good sketch here, like that, where this is now at minus 2. It was at 0 for x squared, but x squared minus 2 now goes through at minus 2. Now the range of the function, again, just like I did in the example, if I draw any vertical, uh, so horizontal lines, I was drawing some random lines, do I touch the graph? Now here, I do not touch the graph. Here, we touch it twice, that's great. Here, we just touch it once, and everything above that actually is in our range. So we write our answer for f of x here as greater than or equal to minus two. Again, you can check out the answers right here. Again, question nine, the range we do in the same way. So if we draw minus 2x squared, notice this as a parabola is going to go the other way and be a bit tighter. Again, you can check all of this with a table of values. Because we have a plus 8 here, if I actually draw 8 minus 2x squared, we take our graph. Again, graph sketching is really important on IGCSE. Then we get a graph that looks something like this going through at 8. Again, we can do our horizontal lines across. OK, so let's draw in some horizontal lines. When do I touch the function? So here we are, touching at 8 here. So basically, it's everything at 8 and everything below 8, including 8. So we write our range here as f of x is less than or equal to 8 for our one mark. Again, just like so. Now, sometimes you can get a part of a graph, so this is worth looking at. Now, the domain of the function is what x can be. So notice we start at minus 4 here. Again, we have functions. So if I draw lines, I'm going to touch the graph here, touch the graph here, touch the graph here. And the last time I can touch the graph with a vertical line here is at the 3. So the domain of our function here it's just going to be between minus 4 and 3. Now, the way that you want to write this is use this notation from inequalities. So what we want to write down here is minus 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3. So all we're asking for in this kind of question here for the domain is, OK, how far does the red function go from left to right? Starts at minus 4, ends at 3, and then we use our inequality notation. Now, our last question here is we've got another function and we're told the range, so between minus 7 and 6, and we want to find out the domain. So the easiest way to do this is we take the edges of our range here, so minus 7 and 6. That's what the function will be equal to, and we want to work backwards. So the way that we do this is we take 3 minus 2x, and we want to work backwards. So we want to make that equal to minus 7 and then work out what x is. This is just basic equation solving. We minus 3. So minus 2x is equal to minus 10. Divide by minus 2. That gives us x is equal to 5. Now we do the same with this part of the edge of our range here. So we take the 3 minus 2x is equal to 6 and work backwards. So we minus 3 gives us 3. And then divide by minus 2. That gives us then minus 3 over 2. So the range of our function here is just going to, sorry, the main of our function here is going to be minus 3 over 2. Be careful with the signs. We want to make sure these signs match. So less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. Uh, notice with this question, you can also write this as a decimal. That is perfectly fine as well. But I prefer fractions. They're generally easier to deal with. 
Okay, that was a whistle-stop tour through all things Domain and Range. Perhaps if you want me to make a slightly more detailed video and really focus on some of the main concepts, then please do let me know in the comments. And if you want to catch up on two other topics that are new to 2025, that is CERDs and exact trigonometric functions, then check the two videos right in front of you.